Well guys, you saw the front end, saw the interior. Now, I know what you want to see. Right back here. Let me apologize first by saying plenty of things are not mounted secure yet. Namely the turbo. And, you know, I got the little rag stuff there. But basically the deal was I just really wanted to hear if this thing would actually run before I bothered mounting everything. The reason why I was worried about it because this was the 3800 supercharged that came out of the dead Fiero over there. You know, I decided to go with a different paint scheme and I went, you know, with the with the classic, you know, Pontiac blue. And I think it came out killer. And especially see all this reflective insulation very high heat and what it also does is brightens the whole thing up so even with the black valve covers and black exhaust you know it doesn't all blend in with the black engine bay so it's and then the engine itself is still the supercharged block but through the quest of power I decided to take off the supercharger and fit a normal intake so I could run the turbo. I chose this intake, I think it's from a 97 Camaro, because it moves the throttle body over to the passenger side of the car instead of on the driver's side here where it would be very conflicting with the turbo and just be a really cramped kind of dumb setup. So this way, intake over here, turbo over here, the inner cooler will be down on the back side and it will be a very nice just swoop of air. You can see the custom fuel rails I have. I actually scored them. That's why I just picked up such a good deal on them. You know, this little crossover tube, you know, that's not going to stay like that. It's just dumb, but it's there so it will run. This whole intake I modified quite a bit. First off, these plugs down here, those were the stock ports for the injectors, but since this is an L67, it already has the injectors in the heads. So I had to get all those plugged. The stupid EVAP, the stupid EVAP uh, sensor went right there. So I plugged that with a freeze plug because I don't need it. I don't like things sticking out. also blocked off all the EGR and the big difference to make this thing very clean along with the custom fuel rails I made my own returnless fuel setup so what this means is that's the main fuel line and that's it the fuel regulator and everything is all mounted on the bottom so I only have the one fuel line not two I don't have a stupid regulator up top and it just makes for a very very clean setup along with the beautiful wiring harness done by member phone dogs on the Fiero forum the reason why I was worried about this starting or not was because while I had it all apart I decided to get some more power and bought a stage 3 um, Statama ST3 camshaft which um, is a very lopy cam made for turbo engines. I slid that guy in there and I had to get a double roller timing chain. And uh, I also added, um, I had to get, I think, 130 pound valve springs to handle the bigger cam so I don't have valve float at the higher RPM. But um, needless to I mean, this engine's been apart. I put the cam in last summer, and I've never had a chance to test fire it. So I was just praying I did everything correct, and as it turned out, I did. You can see the map sensor just hanging here. Obviously, that's not going to stay there. And something else fancy. So any of you guys familiar with 3800s know there's a big bracket here where their alternator sits up top. I 
do not like it because it's ugly. So yeah, by plugging this port here and that one there, that's where those stupid plastic elbows would be that are notorious for leaking. I was able to delete that whole bracket and I bought a low mount bracket that puts the alternator right down there so you can hardly see it. It looks very clean. I don't have an upper engine mount at the moment. It's actually right in the garage. But that just bolts here like normal and makes for a very clean setup. You can see I got the ZZP oil breather. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be running an exhaust scavenge setup. So the hose will come out here from that hole. It'll be this will be the hose that will be drawing all that stuff from the inside of your crankcase out and it will hook somewhere in here to the exhaust so by the exhaust rushing past a pipe that I place in it it will create a venturi and actually suck out my PCB system and burn all the stuff instantly I think it's a very clean setup and hopefully I can get it working well Suppose you guys want to see the real goody, the big old turbo herself. This is she. It's a 67 millimeter precision turbo. Um, the 6776, I believe. However, it has quite a bit smaller, um, 0.68 exhaust side. So that's 0.68 AR, which would basically mean it'll spool pretty damn quick, even though it's you know a fairly large turbo. You can see the oil line running to it. Then I have a big AN 10 or 12, I forget, hose for the drain that goes right down in the oil pan. This whole crossover, I bought off a guy on eBay who actually used on his turbo 3800 Piero talk about score it bolts right up to the stock manifolds like so um this hole right here this is where your wastegate goes but I don't have the v-band clamp yet so I just plugged it with a rag so it doesn't just blow a bunch of soot on my clean engine when I was test firing it this is the second O2 sensor for the wideband gauge. And the turbo, it's kind of in the way, but you'll see it's mounted, it'll be mounted right here. Um, the compressor side will be, of course, mounted towards the firewall, and the exhaust will be here with it running out the back. I have it sitting there right now because when you run the engine, um, oil will be shooting out of the oil lines. So, it's just there right now, not mounted yet, you know, very clean setup I got going. It's hard to see down in the bottom, but there's considerable amount of room down there, and that's where I'm putting my water to air intercooler. You can see my coil pack here, and this was where the battery used to go. So, as you can see, not much room anymore. Yeah, so I guess the big things you need to know is for one, I got the turbo, well, I got the 3800, which has got a large turbo cam in it. This is the turbo, a big old 67 millimeter awesome. snail. I put my trans cooler down here in the side scoop which I've never seen anybody else do so we'll see how good it works and you know obviously I'm not finished with that panel at all but I have all stainless all braided fittings and lines going the whole way you can see the rear suspension a little bit And this is all coated with that poor POR15 stuff that I was telling you about. Mm. 
biggest challenge with, with getting it running, let me go back to the engine, was the bit was um the massive fuel injectors I got. I don't think I touched on those, but I have 80 pound fuel injectors, which I mean, flow 80 pounds of fuel, which is crazy because that's almost double, <laughs> double the thin stock. You should see them. They look like, you know, the holes are like that big on them. I mean, exaggeration, but anyway, to, so to get the 80 pounds to work and then of course to tune for the cam and everything. I just threw my computer and he did the magic and it started first try. The reason I got such big fuel injectors was because I'd love to run E85 in the near future but right now I'm just trying to get the car finished and I'll worry about converting it later but not much I have to do since I got the whole returnless fuel set up that's all AN fittings and stuff and that stuff doesn't corrode with the ethanol like rubber does. The goal is a 10 second quarter mile. You know, this will be a very, this will be my driver. I just want to get in the tent once, get the slip, and just enjoy driving this thing. You know, it will be crazy, but what's fun without a little crazy? And, uh, I know, you guys have been waiting this whole time. I'm saving the best part for last. Let's go start it. Well, I got the keys. Let's see what's what. You can see the glow shift gauges all lit up. See the radio kicking on. These, I haven't wired up yet. And, well, let's go for it. I don't have any cooling yet or you know because the radio isn't even hooked up so can't let it run too long but you can see the paint just kind of cooking a little bit but oh man does that sound good or what and like I said guys you know I wouldn't have made this video if the other two weren't that successful I mean I got a lot of likes on that first start with the stock engine a couple years ago and I mean, I was I was pretty surprised because I only have like three videos on my YouTube account. But thanks for bearing with me, waiting this long. If it makes you feel any better. I've been working on it this whole time, and it's just been going obviously pretty slow. But thanks again, guys, for all the likes, and I hope you like it because I can't wait to get this thing finished.